Hey, and welcome back again from spring break. I hope you guys had a restful week. The first assignment for this week, which is April the 20th through the 24th, is going to be a reevaluation of the political cartoon we did the week before spring break. And if you remember taking a look at this, you may want to pull up your own assignment so you can compare what we talk about now to what you have answered on your political cartoon assignment. This political cartoon assignment was supposed to get you to think about checks and balances with the three branches of government and also to deploy the See, Think, Wonder strategy. So let's get to understanding that first. In the See, Think, Wonder strategy, you're supposed to start at the top of the political cartoon and your eyes are supposed to work all the way down because oftentimes if you look at an image, your eyes are drawn right to the center of an image and that's not what's supposed to happen in a political cartoon. There's symbolism there that you can't miss. And so starting at the top with the C of the See, Think, Wonder strategy, you have the judicial referees and a banner at the top. They're labeled. And notice that there are three. That could be a reference to the odd number of nine uh, justices on the Supreme Court. And a referee, of course, is supposed to make the calls in terms of plays and understand what's going on on the field to see if it's legal or not. And they're using, if you notice, the U.S. Constitution as their rule book. They have these hats on that have scales on them, if you notice that. Some of you pointed that out, which, of course, is a symbol for justice and equality with justice. And some of you even pointed out that they are behind the legislative branch of the legislative lions. And some of you questioned if that can mean that they are on the side of the legislative lions. That is a possibility. It was a good point that you guys made. As we continue to work our way down, our eyes will focus on the legislative lions next. Notice that you have six of those, while you only have four of the executive eagles. A lot of you pointed that out very correctly. The faces of the legislative lions are aggressive. While here with the executive eagles, they're questioning and commenting and talking to each other with a caption at the bottom, how do they expect us to stop them? Notice that you have the lions versus the eagles. And what's our national bird? It's the eagle, right? The bald eagle versus lions, which are the king of the jungle and very aggressive, which you can see in the faces here of the six players versus the four executive eagles. Of course, with lions in America, we never have like kings, and so maybe that could be a uh, reference to how the, the legislative branch is perhaps behaving in a tyrannical way. You see all the things here that the legislative branch can do, and numerically, yes, they can have, they do have, according to the Constitution in Article 1, they do have more checks than the executive or judicial branch has. And so even though numerically they have, may have more checks, the checks from the executive and judicial branches are supposed to be effective at keeping the other branches in check as well and balancing them out. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Some of the other things that I wanted you guys to point out is um, that these guys, the legislative lines, they both look kind of ready to, to make this play, but the legislative lines have the ball. So that means that they are on the offensive. They're trying to score a goal, so to speak, while the Eagles, of course, are going to be on the defensive. And you have this line of scrimmage, uh, a couple of you pointed out, which could symbolize America's rights, or the, even the field could symbolize American citizens or American rights. And also, this is a game. And so is that really what's supposed to be happening in terms of checks and balances? Is it supposed to be like a game with the winner and the loser? Not really according to the Constitution, but oftentimes it, it, it can be. And so the problem is here when you look at it being a game, having a winner or a loser, really we're supposed to have in a democratic republic, yes, a majority rule, but the minorities are supposed to maintain their rights. So here's the, the field, the setup, looking at all of this um, symbolism. So let's take a look at the caption. What do you think it means, they? How do they expect us to stop them? Could they mean the judicial referees, or could it mean the American citizens? It could be either one. If it's in reference to the judicial referees, of course, the judicial branch is using the U.S. Constitution, which in Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution is called the supreme law of the land. So that's what the judicial branch is supposed to be using to keep the other two branches in check. Let's take a look at our checks and balances chart. So a long, long time ago, we took a look at this chart. And so if you'll take a look, there are three branches, legislative, executive, and judicial. And so this is how um, the branches can check and balance one another. When we first looked at this, the first thing you guys noticed is that the legislative branch indeed has more numerical checks on the other two branches. 
and we questioned why was that. Do you remember? It has to do with representation, really. There are more people in the legislative branch. How many are total in the legislative branch? Should be 535. 435 for the House and 100 for the Senate. And these are directly elected by the people, so this is supposed to be about representation. While the executive branch, of course, the president and vice president, are elected indirectly through the Electoral College, and the judicial branch is appointed by the president and, of course, confirmed by the Senate, which is another one of these checks from the legislative branch. So what we're doing is we're giving the authority to this directly elected branch of government, the only directly elected branch of government, the authority to check the other two. But when you look at the judicial branch, which is the unit we're currently studying now, notice what they can do. They can declare laws unconstitutional to check the legislative branch, and they can declare presidential actions unconstitutional to check the executive branch. So what does that mean exactly? It means that the judicial branch, as many of you pointed out, has the power for judicial review. You guys use that word a lot, and I was proud to see that. That means the judicial branch can review or examine the laws that are made with the legislative and executive branch working together because they work together, the legislative and executive, to make legislation, to make laws. And of course, they can also check the presidential action. So using the Constitution, if the president makes an executive order, for example, currently with the situation going on with the global pandemic, if the executive branch has an executive order, they can examine that if, it, if it's called into question or challenged is what the president's doing constitutional? Does it follow the guidelines of his roles in the Constitution? So really, the judicial branch, looking at our cartoon, the judicial branch is really kind of supposed to be like our last line of defense, so to speak. They're very separate from the other two branches where the executive and legislative work together to make a law. The judicial branch interprets the meaning of those laws and actions, of course, from the president. That's their main purpose. So I want you to think about, even though that the legislative lions are lined up here looking aggressive and there's more of them, really when you look at the Constitution, does the judicial branch have a lot of authority and power? I would say so, yes. But I would also call it the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it branch. Because they don't just sit around waiting for the executive and legislative branches to do something and then pull those actions out of a hat, so to speak, and say, yes, this is constitutional or no, it's not. It must be challenged by citizens or states or any kind of government. It's got to be challenged in court. And so that's when the judicial branch will then and only then make a ruling or a decision about the constitutionality of a law or an action. So if you don't like a law or you don't like an action, you've got to challenge it. You've got to take it to court. And in this particular unit with the judicial branch, we're going to talk about how that happens, how you can look at a law to see if it's maybe discriminatory, or if you find yourself in the criminal justice system, how you are processed through that criminal justice system or even the civil justice system. We looked at criminal cases last uh, week, well, the week before spring break. So this week we're going to take a look at civil cases. So hopefully by now you uh, have been able to not only do the C uh, strategy and C think wonder, but also the think and the wonder. A lot of you had some really good questions and made some really good conclusions with the think and the wonder part. Most of you got, it's kind of a, a negative message, although it might also be neutral. It's just the way that it is, but there's a reason why it is the way that it is. And that, of course, refers to direct representation from the legislative branch and giving the, the Constitution, giving the legislative branch more authority to check the other two. But it doesn't mean, again, that the other two don't have effective methods of checking the other two branches. And so the last thing I wanted to point out is actually question number four at the bottom. And question number four is asking, according to this cartoon, what is the purpose of the judicial branch? And while you guys did a really good job on looking at the fact that they make the calls, like the judicial referees were making the calls for the plays between the legislative and executive branches, I want you to do this again with the question right up above my head. In our Canvas assignment page, I want you to use the text box entry to answer the question, what is the purpose of the judicial branch? It's incredibly important that I know you know, you know that I know you know, what the judicial branch is all about before we move on any further. You have to be able to tell me what they do. And so in one to two sentences, what I'd like for you to do for our first task this week, just to answer this question, short, sweet, and to the point. 
So after you've submitted that, you could go on to your next assignment. But if you have any questions about this assignment, you know what to do. Send me an email.